Let's go drill a hole in a customer's car. Hello everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I know I'm super glad to be here. This is a Toyota Sienna miniature van. It's the 2015 model. It's badged as limited. It's got 105,336 miles on the odometer. Customer states, engine oil leaking. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and swing this thing uh, up into the shop here. We're gonna lift it up on the little big rack, do an inspection, check for an oil leak. Uh, there's a couple other things that they wanted to know about. Something about the right side mirror is not functioning. That one over there. Uh, we can check that out later. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, we're backing in, clearing the door of death. In the corner of death, no worries on the door being opened. Yes, I can close that door. I just choose to leave it open for uh, ventilation purposes. Anyway, we're backing in. We're almost there. Oh, cut it to the left. We're a little too close to the lift arm. There we go. So I hit the, uh, the mirror switch, and the mirror appears to be functioning. But what I can see is that the glass is all discolored and uh, faded and it looks like it's got some cracks. So I think the mirror is working, but the glass is uh, is no bueno. So I think we can get away with just a glass replacement if that thing is uh, in fact serviceable. So that covers one section of our, uh, our diagnostic. Oh, we're getting close to the wall back there. Backing up, backing up. See, there's our bumper. There's the shelf. There's the red line that says we're too close. And I think I think barely it's going to fit in here in their reverse position. We'll go back a couple more inches. There we go. Parking's the auto. Pew. Power and now. of course, what video would be complete without popping the hood? I almost popped the gas lid. Oh, there is a complaint about the gas lid too. Uh, sometimes the gas tank door does not stay latched, and when it's not latched, then the side slider door will not open and close. So I need to take a look at that while we're here. And since I popped the gas tank door, let's take a look at the mechanism here and see what the what the dealio is. Oh, it's broken. Look, the hinges are uh, hinges are broken off right here. See that? Yeah, that's uh, that's probably got something to do with it. So I guess it doesn't stay closed or latched or stay latched. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's not okay. We'll circle back to that later. Let's get the hood open here, see what we've got to work with, see what we can do about an oil leak, and, uh, and go from there. Here, let's pop the cover off. I, I think this is a 3.3, but I'm not seeing a, the sticker on it. Pretty sure that's what we're looking at here. No, maybe not. No, this, this might be something else. What displacement are you, engine? I'll have to cross-reference the VIN and go check. Yeah, it's not on this sticker. That's the AC sticker. Hmm. I don't know. Okay. Put that down there. Oh, you know what? I saw something over here. Fun fact. See how the VIN number is etched in the glass? Did you know that if you have VIN etchings of your number in your glass on your car and your insurance company does not know about it, you should call them and let them know because they'll give you a discount on your premium. Look at here. Critters. Oh, look. Another little seashell thing. Yay. That's cute. Let's get rid of this. I know it's actually a snail. I know. I know. Let's check the air filter while we're here. Why not? Couldn't hurt. Uh, come here. And the survey says that's that's an acceptable filter. No need to replace at this current point in time. Let's put that back. Okay, oil leaks, oil leaks, oil leaks. Now this right here, that doesn't count. That's just spillage from people uh, spilling some oil while trying to refill it during service. So uh, we're not gonna have to worry about this right here. Uh, I don't see anything leaking from the front valve cover. This is good. That's a non-issue. Uh, the front of the rear valve cover also looks pretty good. I need to go and uh, consult my computerizer. I, I want to know what engine that is. It's, it's, it's just escaping me. But my computer will tell me. Scrolling down, 15 Toyota Sienna XLE. That's the big Sienna. 3.5 liter, not the 3.3. So that's the... Uh, the replacement for the 3.3. Now we know, 3.5. All right, the rack is set. Both sides, black subscribe button. Let's go ahead and raise this thing up. Moving on up. Let's just check clearance back here on the wall and we are good. No obstructions, continuing to lift all the way up. Again, we're looking for a engine oil leak or a leak of some sort. So let's track that down. 
I see we have chosen some nice directional Michelin tires. Very good. Tires mean everything. All right, all the way up. That's good, and a little shaky shaky. Coming down on the locks, also good. Let's check for that leak action. All right, a couple hours later, I really can't seem to find the leak anywhere. I don't know what's going on. Nah, I'm just kidding, that's the Jeep over there. Yeah, but seriously though, uh, I'm looking around underneath this thing and I'm having a hard time locating any kind of uh, oil leak dripping out of it. I don't think uh, it in fact has a, uh, a petroleum leak of any kind. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 there it is. There's something leaking right there. What's going on here? It uh, definitely appears to be oil. See that right there, a little bit of leak right there. Hmm, smells like oil, tastes like oil. I guess that's oil. So where is it coming from? It's either gonna be coming from this, uh, this line right here, that banjo, or it's leaking from the timing cover. There's a silicone sealant right here. It might be leaking out of that. Very small leak, okay. Hmm. I wonder how they found out about it because it's not even really dripping unless somebody told them it needed uh, some kind of a repair at another facility. I don't know, I'm just speculating. Oh, but what could that be? I need to let this down a little bit farther so I can squeeze my noggin up there. Slightly coming down again. There we go. Back on the lock for safety. Safety click begin. Now. There we go. On the lock. Okay, so here's what I want to do. We've got this uh, banjo fitting right here, it's the pass through bolt. I'm just going to put a little bit of torque on that slippage just to make sure that that's good and tight and snug, and I believe it is. I, uh, I don't think that that thing is leaking. That's actually really tight. Okay. I don't think that's leaking. I think that that oil is just seeping its way out uh, from the silicone right about here. Um, I'm actually gonna classify that as a non-issue. The reason being, the uh, it's not actually dripping, and as per manufacturer specifications, that is considered seepage and not a leak. Um, I can estimate the the repair and uh, the cost to uh, to seal that up. However, it is so minor that I believe that the cost outweighs the benefit of uh, performing that work at this time. Um, not to say I don't like making any money, but I don't think that that's fair to, you know, uh, spend 10 hours worth of labor to do a timing cover for something so small. So what I'm going to do is I will note that and I will, uh, I'll give my opinion on the matter and then kind of go from there. But uh, at this time, I really don't believe that uh, that really needs to be serviced. Uh, what I will do is spray it off and make it clean. That way, as time goes on, we can determine just how big and or small that leak actually is. Oh, oh, I messed it all up. Hang on a second. Shiny, there we go. Adding shiny to the equation. Clean all that off of there. Goodbye, residual buildup oil. Yeah, I mean, that stuff's not even dripping from the oil pan, so I'm, that's really a non-issue, I wouldn't say. Wouldn't put too much effort into such a thing. But we can clean it off and prepare the situation for, uh, for observation in the future. That's what we'll do. Uh, another! All right, enough screwing around. I need to let this thing down again. So while it's here, I am gonna go ahead and do an oil service on it, but I can't do that from up top because I'm gonna throw some cleaner in. That is my new standard protocol, is to, uh, to add a little bit of crankcase cleaner before servicing the engine oil because that's the right thing to do. Looks like the car calls for zero winter 20 oil. That's fine, I have that. Let us migrate over to the additive and fluid cabinet. I still haven't officially named it yet. We're gonna grab some uh, EPR, engine performance restoration, and I'm gonna grab some MOA motor oil additive. That's the after treatment. Uh, I've got single cans over here. Let's use those. There it is. 
they come in a kit and then I end up breaking up the kit so I had to buy some of these to make new kits. Put this uh, right about you. Okay, that's after treatment, that goes in later. This is the cleaner, it goes in right now. Yeah, I know you're thinking, oh my God, another snake oil sales pitch. Oh no, don't worry. I'm not selling it to you. Come here, you thing, you. Yep, no links, no suggestions. This is just what I use, because that's what I use. Pour that stuff in. Now what I'm going to do, since I threw some cleaner in there, we need to restart the engine, let this thing run. It's going to circulate this stinky cleaner for a little while. It's going to go through, break up any sludge and varnish and deposits and things that we're not, uh, not really uh, looking to have inside of our engine. And then once that is complete, we can uh, go ahead and drain the crankcase and get all that nasty out of there. So uh, restarting the engine. There we go. That's the flashlight finger starting method. So we're just gonna let this thing run and hang out for 10, 15 minutes. We'll circle back to it in a moment, shut the thing down, drop the oil pan, drain all the oil out, and then we can, uh... Why, where's my filter at? It's gotta be down below. Then we'll go ahead and change out the filter. Okie dokes, an X amount of time has passed. Let's reach in, power this thing down. Pew. Go ahead and lift it up, and we're gonna go ahead and fill the beans. We'll drain it out, pull the filter. I have uh, I have located and estimated the components to repair the gas tank door and the right front mirror. So I am uh, awaiting feedback on whether or not we are going to, uh, to service those two other items. We will find out in uh, just a moment. All right, oil drain tote, you're coming with me. Let's head on over and spill the petroleum. It's like a 14 millimeter. Yes, it is. Unclick. There we go. Actually, I should uh, I should raise this up some. Unscrew that. Now I'll pick it up. There we go. Now we have less room for spillages and whatnot. Lock her back down, and we'll go ahead and pull out our little plug here. There we go. Let it ride. Now, our oil filter is encased in this uh, piece of aluminum right here, so we need a specialized tool to remove that filter. Let's go fetch that while all this uh, nasty is draining out. Very nasty. I haven't used that thing in a while. I think I know where it is. Yes, there it is. Got it. So what we'll do, stick this guy on our ratchet. Set it for the unclicking position. That's reverse. And we'll set that guy up right here. Take this thing loose while our oil drains out. Oh wow, look at that. Someone didn't put this thing on at a, like a thousand foot pounds of torque. They actually uh, did it properly. I did not expect that to happen. It must be my lucky day. See, the oil's about done draining. It's starting to glug a little bit. It's hot. And stinky, that cleaner makes the stuff stink. Something fierce. I don't want to touch it. Bing. Bing. There we go. Gravity. Ah, oh, oil gravity. No worries, a little bit of wiping down. We're just fine. It's just some splatters. Let's go fetch our filter unit. That's our old one. Looks pretty good. No chunks of anything in the pleats. I can tell this vehicle is maintained regularly. This is good. Let's see, Toyota, Toyota, Toyota. Nah, 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 5047. There we go, that's the one, I believe. Let's see, survey says that this one is the same as this one. Yep, that's the correct filter. Let's take our housing, get it out of here to the bench and re-gasket it. That goes there, that goes there pocket screwdriver so we've got to pluck off this o-ring right here replace it with a new one then we'll install the filter and put it back into the engine oh you guys fell you all right you guys okay workers comp there let's pluck this guy off real easy it's so easy nobody does it how about that there's our new one in the wrapper 
slide that thing back down and make sure it goes into the groove. If it doesn't go in the groove, oh, there you go again. If it does not go in the groove, it will most certainly leak everywhere. And, uh, and that would be horrible. We don't want to do that. New filter going in. Now we may thread this back into the engine. Are we done draining? Almost. Whenever I use the uh, cleaner solutions on these engines, I let them drain for an extended period of time because I don't want any of the, because I don't want any of the contaminated oil to remain uh, in the crankcase. I mean, naturally, some is going to remain in there, but we don't want uh, we don't want boatloads. Now, let's set this to 500 foot pounds of torque or 30 inch pounds, whichever comes first. Nick, that's all it takes. You know what's really cool about this situation is we get to have ourselves a round two. Uh -huh. Continuing shiny. Spray all that old oil out of there. We don't need that. Goodbye. Now it's super shiny. All right, this thing is about done drip drying as much as it's gonna drip dry. So let me fetch that uh, drain plug. It's in there somewhere. There it is. I see you. Hmm, how's that? Uh... Oh, that's a really good washer. Okay, let's throw this guy back in. It's aluminum washer. I'm gonna reuse that one. Whee! Oh my God, you reused the crush washer. No, seriously, it's okay. I can do that. Uh, give that some clickages. There we go. And round three. Shiny. There we go. Get all that old drip out of there. Very nice. Let's lift this thing down. Go ahead and refill our crankcase. Check our level and all that good stuff. Back up. Off the locks. Coming down. All the way down. Okay, back to our can of motor oil additive. Let's pop this guy off. There we go. Like that, it's like the one-handed tool operating skills. There we go, peel that guy off. Mm. I have failed. I can't do it one-handed. Maybe I can. Very cumbersome and awkward, but I did it, yay. Ah, see, it's not that I'm actually one-handed. I just like to do things one-handed because it presents a challenge and I like a challenge. Especially when something's like nice and easy. Let's give that a pour. That's our additive. Throw that in there. This is different than things like Lucas because Lucas is just like a thick base oil that actually is just an additive package. So I don't have uh, 520 in bulk, so I've got to get this stuff. Uh, I'm sorry, 020 in bulk. I have 520 in bulk and I have 530 in bulk, but uh, the 020 I've been getting uh, in the jugs. Give that a good pour. Think I can do it? It's the wide mouth. Oh, fail. See that? What I tell you about spilling stuff. I was gonna attempt to pouring things, but um, no, nah, I've already failed. So we're just gonna do this the conservative way so we don't lose. You guys almost fell down. Whoa, there you go. Slowly falling. Hang on here. Testing my multitasking abilities. There we go. Now that we're at the end of the stream, we can get a little bit more dangerous. There we go. Oh, and I spilled. Look, see, I'm way out of practice. I cannot pour things without spilling things. Bad rain. Get this guy back on. Begin the sealing system now. Uh oh, look at that. It doesn't, uh, doesn't point the right way. We're doomed. Maybe if I We'll unthread it. Try it this way. Can it point the right way? Nope, it still goes the same way. Epic fail! Round four, redemption! There, I've undid 100,000 miles of trilogy. Look at that. Make it nice. Shiny! So shiny. I like shiny. Not another! 
All right, going back in for the restart. Here, you guys go down there and push the button. Oh, there you go. There's the brake pedal starting the engine. I know it was dark. You guys couldn't see. Sorry. Thanks for helping out. Engine's running. No leakages. This is good. Let's shut her down. Pew. And check our dip and stick real quick, like. Now that was five quarts that I installed. Plus the 12 ounces, I think, that was in the can. And it looks like I need to install more oil. Dipstick's not even uh, not even wet yet. So I think this is a six quart engine. I could look it up, but I won't. Let's keep adding some until it's full. I think we're right on the money. Yeah, 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 we're right here at the top mark. Very good. Okay, engine oil's full. Engine oil filter is full. Oil is clean, good condition. All right, let's pop our cover back on. No need to have this thing removed right now. Put that back. Need to uh, refill the blue water because the washi fluid has no, uh, no fluid in it. Let's go find my jug. Where are you, jug? Jug of blue water. I think it's empty. There's the jug. Oh, well, that was weird. What happened? The thing's just filled up. Odd. Interesting. I know, it's the miracle of camera skills and editing and spillages and pouring things. It's not going so well. Fill it up. There we go. Washi fluid is now capable of doing some washi action. That's good to go. Still waiting on some word on the other stuff, but uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to go ahead and proceed. So I was looking uh, through the parts catalog, and I believe that uh, I can just replace this glass right and here. It's not actually glass, it's all plastic, but I, I believe this thing just pops off of here. Let's do this without breaking the mirror. Come on with it. Unconnect. I'm gonna break something to turn it back in this. Oh, I just snapped it back in. Oh, that's pretty. Look at that. I'm breaking it more. Come on, there we go. All right, so Two of the connections are unconnected. I need to go in there with like a like a pick or something to pull that off. Let me find uh let's try. Oh here we go, trim tool. Let's try that. The trim tool may do it. I don't want to break it in case I have to give them the car back until the parts show up because I believe that stuff is uh has to be ordered. It's not local. How do you come out of there? Oh I see, it just kind of slips down. So it slips down, hinges back, and then snaps in. Okay. Then we've got a connector, and then two more connectors. This is for the heated mirror circuit. And I think that this one, these other, other wires, one appears to be for the turn signal or a lane change departure indicator. And then the others, I don't know if that's an indicator or not. I don't think it is. Either way, there's a bunch of circuits that go to the glass. Who knew, right? So let's see what the deal is with this gasket. Now, if I had TIG welding skills, that's probably repairable. Uh, what it looks like is I've got a drill. I mean, these are available. I'll get a new, a new door. And we drill these rivets out right here, remove the door, and then I can install the new door. Um, a very skilled welder would be able to repair that, but I'm not a skilled welder, nor do I have a welder that can weld things that are that small, so our, uh, our real option here is to replace this, uh, this mechanism. And uh, that's what we're going to do. Okie doke, so all the work that needs to be done on this car from down below has been completed. Let's go ahead and swing this thing out right now. What I'm going to do, since I don't have parts at this exact moment, is I'm going to go ahead and bring this thing out and stash it in the parking lot for a little while. That way I can bring something else in and do some other work. So uh, that being said, since I have approval on the other repairs, but I do not have components available just yet, I'm going to put this back where it goes. And we're just going to save these other two items for a future video because this one is nearly complete. Oh, wrong! Corrosion. Hang on, hang on, we're not done yet. Not done yet. So like I was saying, uh, I'm not gonna be able to service those other two units uh, just yet, or those other two complaints, but I can clean this off and I'm gonna go ahead and save the rest of that stuff for future content. Oh, there it is. Been looking for this can. 
yeah i keep trying to end this video and then I, I as i try to thank you guys for watching i find something else to do and then i go and do that so i need to just get with the program and uh go ahead and thank you guys for watching this video yeah i know this was kind of a mishmash of disorganized repairs and inspections but uh you know not everything goes our way so all that being said now i really am gonna end this video and as always i will do that by thanking each and every one of you for watching this video as always i hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video be on the lookout for part two because there will be one we have authorization to continue the remainder of the repairs but uh no parts available at this time so we're gonna have to save that for uh for a part two it's gonna be about a week that stuff was all out in california and that takes a long time for it to get here but rest assured next week i will make those uh those other repairs in this car so again and as always thank you guys for watching and most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of Toyota. Yeah, we can see these things are, they're riveted on and they must be drilled off in order to remove the uh, fuel tank door. Begin drilling now. Drill can. Do I need a bigger bit? What? No, this is fine. Got it.